So then, it's been a while since we've done a video here on this channel, so today I thought I'd come back with quite a special topic. So today we're going to be going over my entire Led Zeppelin collection. So hello and yes, welcome back to another video guys. Now then, as I say, it has been quite a while since I've done a video here. Um, and that's because I've been away. I've been away on holiday. I've been to Spain, um, Ibiza, for um, a week, which was great. Um, hence why I left the channel quite a good, um, quite an interesting video really. I left the channel with my least to best 55 solo Beatle albums, which I thought was a very interesting topic. Um, I thought I'd leave you guys with that, and I thought I'd come back with a special video as well, since it's been a while since I've done one. Um, so, yeah, I thought, Led Zeppelin collection, how can we go wrong here? So I have all of the remastered vinyls, so um, the double LPs and the triple on a couple of them with the bonus material. Um, so for those of you who are interested in seeing that, we're going to be going over all of that. Also have some originals, I don't have many originals, but I brought them down to show you. And then I've got my, I thought I'd bring down my Robert Plant stuff as well, just to chuck in and show you guys. I have done a video just on Robert Plant's solo career, so if you're interested in that, be sure to go and check that video out. And then I've got a couple other Led Zeppelin related items. Um, but anyway, before we get down to it, I am, yep, I've come outside, and I know what a lot of you are thinking, you know, here in Britain. When do you guys get sunny days? Well, unfortunately the stereotype isn't true. We actually do get quite a few sunny days, and... Um, yeah, I don't know, you know, I've been sitting outside in the sun for the last week, um, somebody been chilling by the beach, so I thought, you know, I'd come outside and do a video outside. Um, uh, sorry if you can hear background noise, got the pond on, um, got all the waterfall going and stuff, and, um, TV, we've got the, the doors wide open at the minute, and the TV's on, and, um, I think we've got Only Fools and Horses on at the minute. Can't go wrong there with that show, absolute genius. Best comedy show, if you ask me. Um, but anyway, if you can hear some little noises in the background... I apologise about that, I'm certain you guys are going to be able to pick up on the waterfall um, in our pond, but anyway, it's nice, it's nice being outside in the open, it's nice to have a bit of background noise, so, um, but anyway, Led Zeppelin, let's get started, so anyway, as I say, I am going to be going over um, all of the remastered vinyls, um, with the bonus um, vinyls, so for those of you who are interested in them, um, it's going to be really cool, I'm going to try not to make the video too long, um, but there's a lot to show and it's a very important band, so anyway, before I actually start showing them, I just want to say Led Zeppelin, for me, are one of the most important, iconic bands, they were really the first heavy band, I know a lot of people say The Who, or some people say The Beatles with Birthday and Helter Skelter, I mean, yeah, they were heavy tracks, but I really feel like it was Led Zeppelin who really introduced the more kind of, um, uh, technical guitar riffs in these heavy tracks and stuff, they're the ones who really introduced this whole kind of new genre to music. They came in at a great time when music was at its peak really, I feel. The late 60s was when music really started to get great, started to get really technical. Um, Led Zeppelin come along with their debut album, self-titled, of course as we'll get to, um, which is an incredible album and they just blew up in the, um, the music charts of course. Um, and yeah, they were just off to a fantastic start throughout their entire career. Um, every single album by Led Zeppelin was astonishing. It's almost like, uh, you know, when you listen to like a Beatles album, um, or I don't know, like um, I'm trying to think of other bands that were around at the same time. Cream, you know, Beatles and Cream and Led Zeppelin and um, Genesis, really. I kind of feel very similar towards all of them. Um, they didn't really have any bad albums. They were all solid, great albums. So the thing is with Zeppelin is you really can't go wrong with any of their stuff. But anyway, let's get started. So this was the debut album here, Led Zeppelin. And very famous cover there of the Hindenburg, um, which is really cool. Um, I, the stickers on these, um, actually, on a couple of them they were pasted, they were stuck onto the shrink. But on a couple of them they're actually on the records. This isn't on the Blake, this is on the record on the inside jacket. The only complaint I have with the Zeppelin remasters, and it is a very small flaw because these really are the best remastered jobs I've ever seen, is the track listing was put on this clear sticker on the back of the shrink. So for the triple vinyl sets, um, it's a triple um, gatefold, so you have to take it out of the shrink to get to the last record. So then you have to peel this sticker off the shrink and paste it either on the back of the LP, or like me, on the back of the Blake sleeve. And unfortunately, you do get quite a few bubbles. I didn't do a bad job on this one, actually. This one's not too bad. But, um, 
you'll see on a couple of others, I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, this is a great album. Of course, the opening track, um, Good Times, Bad Times, classic late 60s rock song. And then we got um, Baby, I'm Gonna Leave You, which is fantastic. Been covered by so many artists over the years. Um, and has even actually become quite popular among younger people. Uh, mainly because Miley Cyrus unfortunately covered it, and I'm not a fan of her at all. But she did kind of introduce the song to a young audience, which I like. So I think a lot of younger people are coming onto that song through that. Got Dazed and Confused, which is probably my favourite track on the album. Fantastic. Um, the B-side I don't think is quite as good as the A-side, but you've got Communication Breakdown on the B-side, which is fantastic. And then on the um, bonus material, um, you get a couple um, live versions, you get some other tracks, some outtakes and stuff. If I just hold this up for you guys to read, you can have a look at it there, which is really cool. But anyway, let's take it out the lake and I'll show you the inside because it's very thick. Right, so you can see there the track listing is stuck on the back of my blade sleeve. So yeah, I can't remember, you get a um, free deluxe vinyl set on 180 gram vinyl, um, LP1 original album remastered by Jimmy Page, of course, yep, forgot to mention that, Jimmy Page of course done these. Um, LP2 and 3, unreleased 1960, 1969 Paris concert. So that's really cool there. Nice big thick spine there, as you can see. That one stands out really nice on the shelf. Back cover is a tainted kind of version of the um, cover. Atlantic Records, of course. That's the original back cover to the album. Got the gatefold there. Open it up again. And we got more pictures of the band there. Really nice. Um, all three LPs are pretty much the same label. So I'll just pull one out and show you. I have a feeling that you got a download code for this, but I think I'm wrong. I don't think there is. It, they've um, reproduced the original label there, which is brilliant. And of course, beautiful 180 gram pressing there. So very nice. And this is a must have album in any. To be honest, I would say the first six Zeppelin albums are must have in anyone's collection. To be honest, Led Zeppelin only had nine proper albums. So then you might as well just get the other three, I say. <laughs> but I would say to any record collector, anyone who's into this kind of early or late 60s classic rock vinyl collecting, which a lot of people who I talk to here in the VCR, the first six Led Zeppelin albums are must-haves. And then here we've got um, Led Zeppelin 2, which is my second favourite Led Zeppelin album. Um, an improvement over the first, but there wasn't much to improve on, because as I say, the first album is great, second album's a tad better, um, track listing's going to be hard to see, but um, anyway, this, this every track on here is brilliant, really. You've got A Whole Lot of Love, um, you've got The Lemon Song, Heartbreaker, Rambling On, Moby Dick, which is incredible, um, Bring It On Home, and then... There's a sticker. So we got um, the second one is unreleased studio outtakes. So anyway, let's take it out. Just a double vinyl one here. I think there's only three. There's three triple vinyls. The first one, physical graffiti and coder, I believe. So yeah, really nice. There's the spine again. Original gatefold there. And you can open it up again and see some nice pictures of the band. Okay, and let's have a look at the record here. Atlantic, of course. Slide that back in. You guys know me, I don't really like taking records out of shrink, to be honest, when I get them brand new. But these Led Zeppelin ones, you really have to because of the triple gatefold. And of course, the gatefolds are so nice, you've got to look at them, really. And yeah, this is one of my favourite albums of all time, so, must must own there. And you got Led Zeppelin 3, which a lot of people, and me included, feel it is pretty much like a part 1 and part 2, Led Zeppelin 2 and 3, both very similar sounding albums. I prefer Led Zeppelin 2 a teeny bit, I must say. This one has Immigration Song, which is great. Um, uh, That's The Way is really good. I've... I mean, there's just not as many standout tracks on this one, I guess, is my, my problem with the album. But it's still a fantastic album. As I say, it's still a classic. It's still a must-own. You know, if I seem a little bit negative on anything in this video, to be honest, it's just nitpicking because it is fantastic. Hold them up there. 
keep track listing all the bonus stuff. And the bonus stuff on this one, let's have a look, stickers down in the corner. Um, unreleased studio outtakes again. Um, and the cover, of course, is one very famous. You can do the 12 thingy here on the side. If I can do it. Which I can't. It's a bit stiff, my copy, because I haven't done it too many times. You can see the cover there changing as I spin it. But I quite like the place where I had it. So if I put it back, there we go. So anyway, really nice. Spine, back cover, gatefold. Another gatefold. Really nice. And then I won't bother showing you the vinyl because it's the same record labels we've been looking at in the first two. <laughs> but yeah, another classic album there. Yeah, we're already ten minutes in. I've only done three albums. I need to go quicker. Okay. Then we get on to easily my top ten albums ever. This is truly a masterpiece. Every song on here is breathtaking. And that's Led Zeppelin. Again, self-titled, but... Nickname Led Zeppelin 4, and I think it makes sense because we've got Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin 2, Led Zeppelin 3. So I'm going to go with the nickname and say number 4. This one here, the sticker, unfortunately did get a bit ruined. Got a little bit of a rip in it because this one wasn't pasted on the LP. It was pasted on the, uh, the shrink. This one here is the one that also has quite a few bubbles. It's my favourite album of Led Zeppelin, but it's the one I kind of messed up on um, getting the stickers off. So of course you've got Black Dog, which is an incredible song. Rock and Roll, which is great. Um, Stairway to Heaven is also great. Um, going to California, I love nice slow Robert Plant one, and the closing track when the levee breaks is great as well. So anyone who has anything, who anyone who really says anything negative about this album, I I don't understand it because I really do think this is one of the best albums ever released. Period. You just generally cannot top this one. It does come with the insert that the original one came with? Pretty cool. Slide that back in. And, you know, it's got one of the greatest songs on of all time. It's almost an anthem now. Stairway to Heaven, which is incredible. And John Bonham, I think, really shines on this one. As does John Paul Jones, really. And, of course, well, they all have their moments, I guess, on this one, because the guitar riffs going on throughout it by Jimmy Page. Incredible. And I think that's the, one of the albums where Robert Plant sounds the best as well. Anyway, next one up is Houses of the Holy. And yeah, the bonus vinyl of this one, uh, more unreleased studio outtakes, and it was the same with the last album, which I think I forgot to mention. This one here, you have to take off the, the slip. Spine? I don't think there's any writing on the spines now, I don't think. Yeah, really, really nice. And this one here was the last Atlantic record they did, I believe. Let's slip back on. Uh, uh, gonna put up a fight. There we go. Oh. And yeah, great, great album. This one there is the track listing, of course. And this one, yeah, you just. Uh, the song remains the same, which is great. Um, uh, what else we got? Mm, Dancing Days is a good one. I like that. No Quarter is great. The Ocean. Very good album. Very good album. Obviously, I feel that the first four Led Zeppelin albums is definitely their best day. So I think this one here does drop back a little bit. And they never quite recapture the greatness that the first four albums had. But saying that, this is still a fantastic album. As are the ones which follow it still. So that's not taking anything away from the band here at all. Um, this white bit here is putting up a fight to get back in the Blake now. A little bit of an annoying now on the design. There we go. Done. <laughs> okay, next one up. Of course, very famous album here. We have Physical Graffiti. And again, another must own. This is a classic album. Um, this album here, of course, I really love the second side to the first album, first first vinyl. Um, House of the Holy, um, all through, and then I really like the second record, actually, thinking about it. Some really good tracks on here. I like Boogie with Stu, that was good. Um, yeah, it's a great, great album here. Of course, it is a triple vinyl sex. The original album was two vinyls, and you've got a bonus vinyl in here. The bonus vinyl is just more unreleased studio outtakes. 
track listing. And of course not, this one here I have kept in the tree because there's no gate pole because like the original, it all comes out the top. Um, so you get the card where you can change the album cover about. Of course, I will pull out a record in this case because they're on their own record label here. There we go, which would go on with members of the band, Robert Plant and um, Jimmy Page throughout the early 80s. I think it was about 87 when they dropped that record label, I think. I think, I could be wrong. I know that there's much bigger Zeppelin bands out there who know a lot more about the band than me. But anyway, this is a brilliant album, fantastic, one of the most unique album designs because you can have a lot of fun with the cover. And yeah, again, anyone who has anything bad to say about this album, I don't know what you're listening to. <laughs> okay, so the next one up, of course we're going into the last bit of their career really. These three albums, the next three are the ones which are not quite as well received um, by critics and by fans. For me, however, I really just enjoyed them a lot again. I don't really see the fuss with these. So the first one up is Presence. Now I will admit, this is actually their weakest album in my opinion, I think. But... Anyway, still a great album, I love it. The bonus one here, we just get more release studio outtakes. There we go. So yeah, pretty good album there. As I say, the, the, the six that I showed before this one, I think everyone who's collecting records from classic rock should own. And to be honest, if you've got them six, you might as well get the last three and just get complete, really. And of course, these remasterings, you know, sound fantastic. I haven't really mentioned the sound quality yet, and I will say, this is probably the best remastering job I've ever seen. It's between Led Zeppelin and the Paul McCartney archives. It's sounding incredible. And very faithful to the original here on this one. Um, we've got In Through the Outdoor, which I love this album. I really do. People love to kind of shit on this one a bit, but I love it. This is a fantastic album. Um, more studio outtakes on the bonus record. Uh, but I love this one. I really love um, the, well, the B-side. is fantastic, I think. Um, the A-side's great as well. It's just a really fun album. I'm not quite sure. I, d I don't quite understand the hate on this one. I think it's become a bit of an easy target to people. So anyway, the records kind of come out here. Um, this is... Yeah. Which one's the actual album? Oh, here we go. They've got... No, they both got A's at the top. I'm not sure which one's the actual album here, but they both have their own spines, if you guys can tell. So it's really nicely done. High quality. I'll just pull one out and show you guys. Um... Yeah, that's nice. And then inside, you get a little bit of an insert in here, which I didn't know about. Oh, I think this was the original sleeve, maybe? I don't know what that is, but yeah, good to have it. <laughs> there we go. So I'll put this one away. It goes in this way. And the second LP is just the same cover. A bit more of a grey effect to it. But yeah, that was, uh, I, I like this album. As I say, don't get the hate myself on this one, but um, very good album, very good. I still recommend it highly. It's, you know, it might be, I will admit, you know, I like it a lot, but I will admit it is a weaker album for Zeppelin, but still for any other band it would probably be a highlight, so it's like, can't really go wrong with it still. <laughs> so a great album there. Um, and then last one, and a lot of people don't consider this a Zeppelin album, is it's more unfinished stuff. Well, the original album itself, and this is a triple vinyl set. On the second vinyl set, you get uh, unreleased tracks and outtakes. So, again, it's like, it's basically, the whole album is just a big outtake session. And that's Coda. So, very thick, again, triple vinyl set, kind of like their first album here. And the remastering, very nice, all embossed though, which is really nice, super thick vinyl pressing, feels, this one of the heaviest records I own, <laughs> opens up like that, opens up again, yeah, I don't know if there's any inserts with this one, oh there is, 
just notes by the looks of it. Yeah, I um, don't really know this album too well, I can't lie. Um, so I, I really am in no position to really talk about this album, because this is the one Led Zeppelin album I have yet to get to know, really. Okay, so then. And there is one Led Zeppelin album which I don't own, and it is their live one, but I have the Blu-ray, so I brought that down to show you. The song remains the same. I've been kind of holding off on buying this, because I keep thinking to myself, well, surely they're going to remaster that, but... I got the BBC sessions coming out now, which I have pre-ordered, so I should be getting them. Um, but don't know where the song would make the same remaster is, and I like that concept. I think it's pretty good. Anyway, on to some of my other Led Zeppelin press records now. I'm going to go pretty quick. So we're at the 20-minute mark. This is my Spanish pressing of their first album, which is really cool because it's replicate the original Plum label, and it's on purple vinyl, so that's really nice. Slide that one back in. And then here I have an original plum label first pressing of Led Zeppelin 2. So just to show you guys I'm not lying, I'll quickly show you the record of this one. This is incredibly rare and worth quite a lot of money, so I'm very, very pleased to own this. Incredibly rare pressing there. In very good condition as well, so I am very, very grateful to to own that one. Privilege, and I got it very, very cheap. So there we go. In it goes. Uh, Blake. <laughs> uh, these Blake sleeves make the video. They, these, I blame these Blake sleeves for adding on like another five minutes on my videos. <laughs> And then I have a later 70s pressing of it, which is the one which I used to play before the remasters come out. And then exact same deal for Led Zeppelin 3, which does have the spinny thing, which is cool. And then again, the same for Led Zeppelin 4. So, really cool. And here I have a copy of a present, which is really nice. Skipped, I haven't got a... Well, a 70s pressing of uh, House of the Holy or Physical Graffiti yet, but I will do at some point. And then that is actually it. I thought I had a couple more, but no, that's it for Led Zeppelin. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the Robert Plant stuff. I have done a video entirely on Robert Plant, so if you want to see me go into more detail on him, be sure to go check it out. But this is his debut album, Pictures at 11, which came out in 1982, which is a very good album. Then here we got probably his most popular album, which came out in '83, and uh, this is the principal moments. And not a huge fan of this one, but we've got um, shaken and stirred. And then again, not a massive fan of this one, but we got now and Zen. And I do love this one. Um, I love pretty much every Robert Plant album from here on. We've got Manic Nirvana, which is great. I do love this record. It's fantastic. And then here we've got Raising Sand with Alison Krauss in 2007, which is more of a country uh, slow album, but this is a fantastic record. Blew me away. Wasn't expecting to like it too much, I can't lie. But blew me away. Fan of Joy, which could be my favourite of his most recent three kind of country feeling albums. And then of course we have, oh hang on, I forget the name of this one. Lullaby and the Ceaseless Roar, and this is with a band called, oh, this is with a band called, oh, the Sensational Space Shifters. So yeah, this is really cool. This this one and Band of Joy have nice etchings, but I showed them in the Robert Plant video, so if you want to see them, go over there and check it out. Um, other Robert Plant stuff, I'm waiting for it to be reissued, because kind of like Tom Petty, but actually worse than Tom Petty, I'd say, the prices of the ones from the 90s and the two, early 2000s go for incredible amounts of money, and I'm, I'm not paying that. Um, but there's one which I really wanted to get on vinyl. I forget the name of it, because I've got the CD. It's the one where it's like all these wooden faces of, on the cover. It's a brilliant album. Um, I'll probably think of it as soon as I finish filming the video. Um, 
Also, I did bring this out to show you guys Nebworth because uh, Robert Plant and um, Jimmy Page do reunite on this. And this was from 1990, which is really cool. It's just a fantastic live album in general because well, you've got My Hero on it, you've got Eric Clapton, you've got Tears for Fears, uh, you've got Robert Plant and um, Jimmy Page, you've got Genesis and Phil Collins, you've got Paul McCartney, um, and you've got Pink Floyd. So you've got a great lineup on here, so definitely worth getting this live album. Whew. We're done. That's it. That is the Led Zeppelin collection, guys. Now, then, I, as I say, there is a Robert Plant video out there as well for you guys. Um, and if his albums ever do get reissued, there'll probably be an updated Robert Plant video. But anyway, oh, just kick the tripod. Um, that is it for the uh, Led Zeppelin um, vinyl collection video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, please hit the subscribe button, like the video, and leave a message. And I'll see you guys next time.